Hello everyone, welcome back, thank you for joining us. In this video, we will share with you how we created our animated trees that we shared in our latest video demo. Now before we start, let's have a look at some references videos from pixels.com where you can find some really nice high resolution images and videos for free shared by great artists. So. This video that was shared by Engine Acquired, hope I'm pronouncing this right, and his video will see the movement of the trees in real life. What we're trying to do is simulate the movement of the branch and also simulate the movement of the leaf by applying vertex paint and assign a simple grass node animation inside Unreal Engine. So let's have a look how we created this. So inside Blender, before we create our tree, let's create a basic example to demonstrate how this process will work. We'll start by creating two cylinders. One is a low poly and the other one is a high poly. And let's assign them both side by side like that. And let's add a wind force to simulate the wind effect on them. Let's position it to this side. And in order for the physics to start simulating interaction between the wind and the cylinder, we need to add some physics properties, which is cloth simulation for both of them. And let's make sure to choose the bending model as a linear, as it fit our example more. Once we do that, let's increase the strength of the wind a little bit. And when we hit simulate, we'll see that they falling down and also the wind is pushing them away. So now that we know that the interaction is happening, let's create a pin vertex group so they will not fall down. In edit mode, let's create some vertex segments and the first one and also in the high poly, but more segments. Now in vertex mode, let's choose these vertex and go to the object data properties and create a vertex group and name this as non movable and inside our close simulation properties inside the shape let's add the non movable vertex group to the pin group the same also for the high poly cylinder Let's also assign it in the pin group. All right, so when we hit simulate now, we'll see that the simulation is going and they are not falling down. Now we need to start adding some properties to the cloth simulation so we can actually simulate a branch movement. And we can start by increasing the bending and the stiffness properties. Let's, let, let's make this as 40 and also the bending and the dumping. Let's make it 35. For the high poly as well and now we can start to see some resistance from the cylinder opposite to the wind effect but the problem is in real life the wind doesn't actually keep producing that effect continuously it's actually more as up and down in terms of uh, wind power so to simulate this we will activate the animation of that strength but let's bring the strength power to 15 for example and click on the icon next to that and on the timeline let's choose the graph editor and make sure you are in the same range of that strength and we'll add a modifier if you don't see the modifier just press on n and we will add a noise modifier basically we will increase the scale and the strength of that went over the timeline so now if we hit play again shift left click to start from the beginning we can see on the low poly the resistance goes back and forth in order to simulate a branch movement but in the high poly we're actually getting an undesired effect that will not represent a branch movement and this means that we need to translate the animation from the low poly to the high poly cylinder without actually simulating that to the high poly cylinder. So I'm gonna delete 
a close simulation of that hypo cylinder and in order to translate that animation we will create a bone system to the low poly cylinder so we will start by adding an armature and in the front view or in the side by pressing 3 and by pressing on S we will scale the bone a little bit to to reach that vertex group now in edit mode select the upper sphere and press on E to extrude and Z on the and on the Z axis as well so this is basically how you create a bone structure to any object all right so now we need to connect the low poly cylinder to the bone system and this can be added easily by creating a vertex group for each segments to match those uh, number of bones so we'll go back to the vertex group and if we count this it seems like we have seven vertex group we don't need actually to add for the bottom one so let's add a seven vertex group All right, so now we're gonna go into edit mode and we'll choose this vertex group and assign it to number one. And the same goes for each of the other vertex as well. Now let's go to the Bose mode while we're selecting our bones and let's go for the first one and inside the bone constraint properties will add an inverse kinematics and we'll choose our cylinder and assign the first group to that one. The same will go for the other bones as well. Alright, so now that we have finished assigning each group each vertex group to the bone we can start now creating the animation and we can see now that the bones is moving with the cylinder now once we have this animation done what we're gonna do is select our bone and go into bose mode select all the bones and from bose animation bake the action and we're actually gonna choose everything except for the overwrite current action because we don't have any other actions created yet but we're sure want to clean our curves and also cle clear it from the parent which is the low poly cylinder once we hit ok we will get our result with the baked animation to that bone system so now if we delete the low poly cylinder and the wind itself we, we can see that we have our animation big to that bone system now all what we need to do is move our cylinder or high poly cylinder and choose first our high poly cylinder and then the bone system control P choose with automatic weights and this will create or will translate the animation from the bone system to the high poly cylinder so this is basically our idea on how to animate the trees. So let's start by creating our tree. So in order to create our tree, we will work with the M-Tree add-on as it's actually a very useful add-on to create detailed trees. You can easily download the add-on from the link in the description below and go to the preferences and as usual install it and it will be available and your add-ons list. Then go to the outliner window and click here and choose the entry node tree. Let's increase the space a little bit. Now the first thing we're gonna do is create a new and we can actually take advantage of the preset trees that they have created here now let's load this preset and as you can see if you're not familiar with the add-on it's basically create tree by 
trees by connecting the different nodes a trunk a branch and then a tree parameters if you hit create the tree and this is the default tree you'll find it now we need to understand how to create our tree because we don't want to actually create as that much of branches so we can animate them easily so I'm gonna delete this branch node this one also as well and I'm gonna update the tree now the number of branches now is 12 so I'm just I want to start with one and let's update that as well and if you see here they are actually three not one and this is because there's a few settings here that we need to tweak so we can improve our tree count so the first thing you're gonna notice there is a maximum split of numbers so we're gonna make this as one and let's hit the auto update so we see our update continuously and then and you'll see that you have also a split probability and this will increase the split of that branch and we can also take advantage of the gravity there is also the resolution which is also important and the shape end which you can actually extend that branch the start of the shape and also the start of the branch itself on the tree also the radius which can be useful also to increase the details of the tree by increasing that radius width and the split angle where you want to see that split coming uh, in terms of an angle after that we can start by increasing the number or the amount of the branches on our tree don't forget also to reduce the length a little bit let's make it for example five and it seems like the shape and need to come down a little bit so we have control over that a little bit and also the split probability and by now we can also increase the amount of that branch and you can keep also tweaking the seed to randomize your tree until you reach to the desired shape you're looking for now I want to also in this example to minimize the number of branches for the sake of this tutorial So let's assume we're gonna stick to that shape now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create copy that node paste it Control c Control v and connect it because we want to actually create our leaves on the second branch so i'm gonna minimize the length also and the shape end a little bit and start also increasing the amount let's make this for example as 80 increase the radius a little bit so they can be visible okay so let's assume that this is our tree now that we can start working with it now if you have used mtree before you will notice that there's a preview and a final version of that tree in order to create our low poly tree so we can animate it we'll stick to the preview for now and we'll get back to the leaf part also as well so the first thing we need to do is to create our armature now as you can see it is really impossible to create this number of bone system by extruding all over that tree and instead there is a smarter way to do that the M3 add-on is basically creating a curve shape so we can actually go to the curve properties and under the geometry and the bevel depth we'll set this to zero so now we have our curve that we can actually merge all the vertex once we convert it to a mesh so we're gonna convert it to a mesh select all the vertex right click and merge by distance now it seems like we have removed 130 vertex but if you want to know the number of these uh, vertex we can actually do that by many ways so let's select them all and if you go here 
we'll see that there is an indices option that will show us the number of these vertex. You can find this in the developer option. If you can't find that, just go to the interface and activate the developer extras. Now we can see our vertex count, but as you can see, it's all messed up. We can actually sort that by going to the mesh and sort elements. And you have here many options to do that, but the cursor distance is the best as it starts from the cursor location. So it's obvious that we're going around 900 vertex. All right. Next, we want to take advantage of the skin modifier to, to create our armature, as this is one of the cool features in Blender. But before we do that, we want to minimize also the number of these vertex. The best way to do that is reducing these vertex by half the number. And you can do that by going to select, checker deselect, and this is basically going to reduce the number of that vertex to at least half of that. And then right click, dissolve vertex. So now we have reduced our vertex count. Let's apply the skin modifier. Once you apply the skin modifier, you can see that because of that depth or width of the mesh, it's really difficult to see these lines. So we're going to go into edit mode, select the vertex, select them all, N, and in the mean radius, X, just type 0.05 for example. So we can see our tree more clearly. Next, we will create our armature. And now, if we go to the wireframe mode, you can see now that the armature has been created automatically by that modifier, which saves us a lot of time. Now, the next thing is to assign these bone system to the vertex group. Now you have seen how we did this in our basic example in the beginning of this tutorial. For the vertex group is actually the skin modifier have automatically created our vertex group. So if we sort this by name, we'll find that the last vertex group is 603. Now the next step is to merge the bones to these vertex by adding the inverse kinematics. Doing this manually is impossible and it's actually not practical at all. So. We have looked around for a smarter and faster solution as well. And we came across this forum, the FS developer, which stands for the Flight Simulator Developer. And a very useful script done by Python, created by an artist called Carlo922. Now we have actually messaged Carlo asking him for a social network of his so we can share it on, on the video in case people want to reach him out ask him some questions but he said it's fine just share the the post link and that's uh, that's okay so many thanks for carlo to share his python script that will help us finish this but once we load the the script inside blender so basically we have copied his script and saved it as a Python file and inside Blender you can go to scripting and, and load it inside your scripting page. Now when we loaded Carlo script it's basically as he mentioned in his uh, comment it's only used for the example that he was referring to. So it was really difficult to solve that and edit that script to work in our example. Let's join this area over here. And then we had to find some help to solve that. And a friend of mine called Ahmed Nagib is actually a structural engineer who is really a genius in creating Python script. I showed him the script and I explained to him what I want to do. And trust me, in less than five minutes, he changed some values like the bone count counter and how the the numbers should be counted and immediately the only thing that was left is to rename the target let's say our target here is a tree name and let's get the number of the vertex group 
that is 601 and then one of the conditions that was written inside that script as well was to make sure that the bones are set to pose mode but before that make sure to convert your tree to a mesh otherwise you will get unwanted effects from the rigging so we will choose our bone system and go into pose mode select all the bones and hit play and as you have seen in less than two minutes all the tree model was assigned and rigged to that bone system so many thanks to Carlo and also to Ahmed Nagib where I actually added his uh, LinkedIn page connection if you guys interested to know more about Python uh, or any other ideas also for using Python script so thanks for you guys and also for the community to share this now we can proceed with our uh, tree animation now if we if we go to the object mode we'll find that all of our bone system have been assigned to each ball all what is left is to add a physics simulation or a physics properties as a cloth simulation and make sure it's linear and let's minimize the vertex mass a little bit and for the quality step as a start make sure to start as a one and for the multiplier speed increase this for example to 10 the same thing as we did in our basic example increase the bending in both of the stiffness and the dumping last let's create our vertex group that will not be movable now the best way to select the vertex group that will be bent as non-movable let's go to the top view and select this area and it will select most of the trunk part now by pressing ctrl and plus we can also increase the selection range now as you have seen in our video example when the tree start moving based on a wind interaction basically you will see the end of the tree branches moving and waving uh, in the wind direction so we'll choose this these vertex as our vertex group and and let's create our non-movable assign them and let's go into our physics properties to the shape the pink group and just type none movable and let's add our wind as well now the good thing about this technique is that you can actually change the wind direction to get uh, a different result in terms of a, a wind simulation of that tree now all what is left select our wind let's give it a value again for 20 activate the animation graph editor and go to that value that we have chosen and add a modifier and then increase the scale the strength and we can now start our simulation Now once the simulation have finished, you can see that we start to see some movement in these branches but maybe we need to add more to that branch non-movement. So we can do that easily by going again to the non-movable vertex group, edit and hit select and we can just increase it a little bit and then remove, assign again and that's it. Now we can also increase the number of that uh, noise details and also increase the scale of that curvy look now once the simulation have finished we can see now that 
the tree branches have started moving based on the wind direction and effect now now we can move actually to a better stage for that animation and to do that let's increase the quality step to 5 and increase also the speed multiplier to 20 and one more thing we can actually increase the animation length or the simulation length by going to the cache and typing for example 1000 let's go to our uh, timeline and increase this again 1000 so let's hit simulate now and come back when it's finished now the simulation have finished 1000 frames and we start to get this kind of motion and resistance on the end of the tree branches now let's move to the final part where we actually gonna create the final model of that tree if you have things saved you should find your settings that you have set up earlier for the tree also you can save the preset so you can call it anytime if you close the file or something now what we're gonna do is first we need to bake that animation to the bone system so we're gonna again choose the bone bows mode select them all and inside the animation we're gonna bake that action we only have one current action so we want to clean the curves and clear the parents okay now once our animation is baked to the bones we can now delete our low poly mesh and also the wind and if we hit play we're still gonna see the animation that we have baked so now the final stage is to create our high poly tree model and this is gonna be by going to the tree parameters and choose final and create the tree now the difference will be very visible when you isolate the tree we will see that all of the branches are connected together so if we go and show the wireframe mode all of these branches are connected and we don't have any openings and we can actually take advantage of that if we want to take a closer shot of that tree without worrying about any of these branches not connected so let's end the isolation and now we can see that in wireframe mode we will translate the animation to the high poly tree by doing the same thing we did before selecting the tree and then the bone system control p with automatic weight and just give it a second and now we have our animation translated to the high poly mesh let's isolate this and go to solid mode and we will see that we have this wind effect for a close-up shot and a cinematic arc viz uh, animation now what is left is to create our leaves so let's end the uh, let's end the isolation mode and in the tree parameter you will find create leaves let's save this progress so far you will we'll find create leaves and to create that leaf we need to pick our leaf model and let's first see what's available also in the add-on if you hit shift a which is basically the shortcut to create all of these previous nodes that we have created so we'll find a twig node and if you execute and if you hit zoom into that twig you'll find that the available model inside the add-on is actually really good in terms of uh, details and you can actually change to other to three other types and execute and once for example if you choose one of these uh, leaves let's say for example this one you just go to the tree parameter and choose the leaf now it is important to mention that before you update the tree make sure to copy your bone uh, system that have been animated and paste it into another blender file just an empty one 
just as a backup because sometimes when you update or most of the time your bone system will disappear so let's see how this is gonna happen now if we choose our leaf which is this one update our tree now you can see that the bone system have changed have disappeared but because we have it copied from another file you can see now that the animation is still there and for these leaves now it is always recommended to use the custom leaves as you can have more control over the number of segments where you can increase it or decrease it or you can also use this as well but it's always recommended to use a custom uh, leaf so we have our uh, leaf here that we have created using a reference image from pixels.com also just when you type uh, the search there's a lots of good artists like Kelly over here who have taken a really high resolution of these uh, leaves and you can take them inside blender as a plain texture and trace it and to create the leaf uh, using that reference now we will update our uh, tree again but at first let's change our custom leaf and increase the size a little bit and maybe change the leaf flatten also the weight so now when we hit the animation you can see that the bone system is moving along because we need to again parent the tree to the bone because every time we up, we lose the animation uh, information and now if we choose the leaves we'll find on the modifier there's a uh, a convert option to convert these leaves into a single uh, leaf but they're still actually uh, an essence of the main custom leaf so we'll choose the custom leaf and also the the bone system in the tree control i and then hit select the tree control p and choose vertex to parent the leaf to the tree and get also the animation translated to them if we hit play we'll see that the animation is translated and to these leaves now this is really useful as we have mentioned before if you have a cinematic uh, animation that you want to produce and you need a closer uh, look through the tree with a realistic look and this is just a basic example that we have created but i'm sure you guys can have more fun doing this and create more artistic and better uh, trees and leaves uh, using this method so in our next video we'll continue how we're gonna export this to unreal engine hope you guys found this tutorial useful to you and again if you have any questions please share it down in the comments thank you very much and see you in the next video